Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak, and right now we're going to take a minute and I'm going to show you some must-have items for your bow fishing boat. These are things that are going to make your life a lot easier, make it a lot better for you, and make your time on the water that much more enjoyable. So uh, let's go through and take a look at them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's down here in the below somewhere in one of the corners so that you get more of these videos every week. I got two videos a week that come out, all things related to hunting and outdoors activities. So uh, definitely check it out. But let's get into this and take a peek. Now, my bow fishing boat here that you can see, um, I built this boat. I actually have videos on here. So you can see this boat if you want to check my other videos. This is my uh, custom made weld built. It's a uh, 1760 with 29 inch sides. Uh, but I, so I've done a whole video on there before if you want to see that. But some of the things I want to show you here uh, that make a difference. One, these little lights right there that you see those little black LED lights. I have one on each side of my troller. Um, they're very cheap. I will put a link down below for these, but they are very, very inexpensive and they are worth a million bucks. They definitely light up everything really well for you when you're out there on the water and make life a lot easier. Uh, so once you're coming in, like going through the canals and through the rivers and stuff, you can turn those on. Uh, I'll show you how once I get in the boat, I'll show you. I'll turn them on for you and show you how I got it set up. But just very, very super simple. A couple more things while we're outside of the boat on the outside here that I want to show you. Um, one of them is this little dude I got right down here. This is just a little army tack or army tech or whoever, or whatever it is. I don't even know who made that. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it, but I thought it was, I think it's army tack, but, uh, it's just a little knockoff kind of, uh, light, but I got it mounted on a little clamp here. I'll show you that too. But, uh, this light has got a few different power output settings so you can change it and you can go through the different power settings. Um, I leave it on high. Um, but the reason I have that mounted on the trailer, when you get into some of these really remote places where you're dropping in at a river and some pretty rough current and you're in, uh, unlit places with no, you know, just dirt road kind of backwoods kind of stuff, um, these come in really handy because then what you can do is when you're backing it down before you, you know, when you come out and you undo your tie straps here, you can turn that light on. Then as you're backing, this lights everything up behind your boat so you can see where you're putting it. And then once it's in the water, um, you know, when you come back. So when you come back to get your boat to unload to go home at night, you turn this on. You can back the trailer back down. And when it's in the water, this lights everything up so you can see under there really, really well um, and see exactly where the trailer is as you try to drive up on it and not have to fight with nothing. So that little light right there has been a lifesaver. If you're only launching at major launches, that are well lit and stuff like that, no big deal. But if you're in some of these remote ones, that little thing right there has been a lifesaver. This is the clamp that I use. I'll put a link for all this stuff down below for you. But what I like about these little plastic or rubbery kind of squishy clamps uh, that I used for that is that they got a screw hole in it. So you can actually counter, it's countersunk. So you can put a screw into this and mount it wherever you want and it's not going to come off like it would with glue. So it's locked on and these are pretty, pretty solid. That light has been on there for four years and has never come off of there. So that works just absolutely phenomenal. So those things are a really good feature to have. Uh, rest of the stuff, I'm going to climb in the boat and then I'll show you there once I get in. Okay, we're in the boat now. You can see I got those two square black LEDs up on the front right there that I was telling you about. Well, I put the switch to run them is right back here, okay? You can see I've got this panel here with three switches. Uh, one of those switches runs those lights. One is actually not being used, and the other one is actually for my bilge pump, which is right down there that I have set up, and I built that bilge pump mount and sprayer uh, so I didn't have to drill into the boat. You can see it shoots right off the top. It's a little Kydex bracket that I made. I used a lot of Kydex in this boat and made it a lot of this stuff myself, So, but now that's I didn't have to drill into it. It shoots it right up out of there with that bilge pump. I made that battery switch out of Kydex. I made a lot of stuff out of Kydex on here, uh, but with the switch cover, the switch panel, here is actually uh, made out of kydex too but so if i turn this on if you look up front here and i show you you watch the front of the boat i hit that switch those are those two front leds so going down through the river and stuff they just make life so much easier and what's nice is those switches are lit so you can see when i have them turned on i know which one's up or on um, but you can see those leds off on they're pretty potent little leds but they make all the difference in the world for going down a river so that's definitely a worthwhile thing to do another thing you need light on is inside the boat when you're loading fish fixing arrows things like that see these two white strips that are right here 
Those are actually stick-on LEDs. All they are is a stick-on. These have been here for over four years, uh, stuck right there. And then I, right here behind these two bolts is where I have the switches for that. So I got a switch system set up and mounted. Um, I don't know if I can show you in here if you can see. Let me see if I turn a light on in here. Uh, you can see right there. You can see the switches right there that I have running those. You can see all my ballasts. Uh, you know, and all my stuff for my lighting and all my happy wiring and all my crap under here and how I kind of did everything. They're all mounted right on here on the walls. But when I hit that switch in here, you're going to get those LEDs to come on right there in each corner. And those will light the whole inside of this boat up. Now you want those down low because if they're up high, they get in your face. Down low, they light, put a nice even light all over the inside of this boat and make a tremendous difference for you. Um, so they're well worth having in there um, and definitely a nice advantage. So uh, those are a good thing to have. Those other switches I got run my marker lights and that kind of stuff in there. But um, but those those little LED strips, I'll put links for this stuff, all of it down here below, make it easy for you, but very simple to do. Now, another thing you want is you're going to need something to tie down your fish bucket with and some of your gear. In my boat, I was fortunate enough that I had this open clamp right there so I could just put a C-clamps. I just mounted those clamps, those C-clamps right there. Again, four years. Uh, this has worked perfect. I got four of these, and I can use it to lock down my fish bucket, too. I have one there. I have one right there. I have one in that corner. And I have another one right here. So I lock those down. So they definitely make life easy. Uh, fire extinguisher, another great idea. Fire extinguisher, and then I got a knife right there too. If you got a cut fishing line, um, I always carry a knife on me, but a lot of people that fish with me don't. So I have right here, just sitting there, very simple Mora knife, to just kind of wedged right in there. And uh, so it's there if anybody needs it. Also, with my generator, I put it on a camping pad. This is just a cheap, inexpensive camping pad. But it reduces all that vibration through the floor of the boat, and it works a lot better. It lets you get up on fish a lot better. Also, lock your generator down, okay? Padlock, cable, and all I did was put a little bracket right here. I'll shine that light in there so it's better to see. A little U-bolt type bracket in there, or a little U-clamp bracket that I got right at the hardware store. And uh, a couple self-tapping screws, and I locked it right in. This way, nobody's going to steal your generator when you're at the store, you know, when you stop and eat at the restaurant at 4 o'clock in the morning for breakfast on your way home. Uh, you don't have to worry about somebody taking your generator from you. So, uh, simple cable lock, something sweet, simple, and easy to do makes a huge difference. Now, if you run a push pole like I do, I have this 10-foot push pole right here like this. Okay, again, something that's been here for over four years. This system works flawless. It gets it out of my boat. That's a big pain in the butt to store that big pole and find somewhere to put it. What I did is I took these clamps right here like this that you get at Walmart or any store you want, just those little spring clamps. I pulled the rubber off of them and I put a piece of wash machine rubber hose on it is all I did. <coughs> I did cut them down a little shorter and I mounted them right on here just like that and that sits right inside of that bracket of that and that thing does not move or go anywhere then i just use these night eye gear ties uh and wrapped them right around it so that it locks it on i have one there and you can see the other one down there it holds that push pull and that thing will not move will not go anywhere it just stays right there um thousands and thousands of miles probably twenty thousand miles of driving this boat down the road and all the time fishing and it stays right there now if i need it all i gotta do quickly untwist tie the this one and untwist that one and pull the push pull off we use it almost uh, you know we use it once every three or four times we're out when we get stuck so it's a great system i use the same kind of setup over here for my oar because we use this to get weeds and stuff out of the way of the troller and stuff but i just simply squeeze that clamp and that comes off and then I just got another little night eye twist tie wrapped right around it here. And it's just kind of, I, I wedged the end of that up inside of that crack in there on a little corner hole to hold it. But keeps it right there, sturdy, out of the way, doesn't make any noise. And sweet and simple kind of an option. But again, things that you need to have access to close and ready and right there for you. <clears throat> now as we move back further here, another key thing, spare arrows, having them close. If you look under here... I have down there, that white tube that you see has actually got six arrows in it, okay? That's a PVC tube with a cap on each end, and there's actually six arrows inside of there um, that make life sweet and simple and easy. But I want two of them close and quick and easy, so I have them right here. 
These are actually, they've been there forever again. And what these are is these are mounted on judos, okay? Or I mean on uh, piggybacker arrow holders. This tool or this thing right here is called a piggybacker. I'll put a link to them below. It's designed to be able to lock an extra arrow to your other arrows in your quiver. I cut this in half and I mounted half at this end. Half at that end. So one of these will mount one fish arrow on there. And they're designed to hold arrows. And they work like a champ. And they hold two arrows right there. Just tucked in. Ready to go at a quick instant grab. I have my other ones underneath the deck if I need them. But having two arrow access right there. Quick and simple is a very nice feature to have. Definitely a worthwhile thing. Um, and then the next thing I want to show you here. Is going to be headlamps. Okay, I pulled these out of there, but out of the, that box. But headlamps are important when you're on here. Make sure you got a couple headlamps. Doesn't matter what kind or how or what it is or who makes it, but make sure you have headlamps and stay in the boat all the time. They come in handy for so many different purposes. I actually wear that one every single time I'm out here bow fishing. That that light is actually on my head, 100%. This is just a spare for anybody else who needs one. That one's with me all the time. Now, another thing that is important here is going to be that you have, I'm trying to find my light again, there we go, a back or a dry box type storage setup. You can see I have one here and I have another one there. I have two of them on here. I will put links to this stuff down below, but just a simple dry box. Or open it right here. I got voter registration info in there. I have a compass. I have another flashlight. A key. That paracord is actually the key to my lock for, uh, you know, for uh, my motor and my generator. They're both keyed the same, so I have the extra spare key there. I know it's not good to have it on the boat, but most people wouldn't know it's there, so I have that there. But in a dry box, and then my headlamps go in there as well, too. So I just screwed it. You can see the tape hiding that screw, but I just screwed it right into the boat, sweet and simple, right into the transom there. I have another one of those brackets right there that I actually will take and put a flashlight into, so there's another flashlight handy. They come in really handy to have them around. And close that out. So that's important. Now, you saw I had a plug in there. My boat uses two plugs. I have a plug in this corner and a plug in that corner over there. So I have two plugs for my boat. Having one extra in there is good, but I will tell you, these things do come out going down the road eventually once in a while. If they start cracking in those plugs, the dry rot, they dry rot out sometimes, and you'll put your boat in the water and all of a sudden you're taking on water. You need to quickly and fast be able to plug it. I keep two extra plugs right there, fast access all the time. Um, we've had them come out on us too, just driving through the water and going, and all of a sudden you start taking on water and you're wondering what's going on. Um, that plug will sometimes just dry rot enough to where the rubber doesn't hold anymore and then you'll catch a weed or a uh, you know a, a stick or something and it will grab that and it will actually pull it right out of your boat and then water is coming in so having two of those that are very quick to get to and fast access is good that is just a piece of angle aluminum that you can get from home depot or any hardware store uh doesn't cost much money at all and all i did was take it I gr used my gr my shop grinder that you see sitting right there on the corner of my bench, and I grounded I rounded the corners out, and then I just drilled a hole in it with my regular standard drill, the size of those uh, uh, size of the plugs, and then I just glued it there. It's just glued on there with regular Gorilla Glue, and it's held perfectly, and it stays. But it's been there for four years, but now I have two plugs, immediately quick access. If anything were to happen, it I can just reach over and plug it with um, compasses. Notice I have a ball compass. Again, we are just talking about something that is just glued right to that. Okay, the back of that is flat. All I did was put some Gorilla Glue on it, and I glued it right to the thing. Um, I got one right there. And as we get up and work over here, I have another one in this corner right there. They're just sweet, simple, and easy to be able to figure out which way you are. When you start landing fish and your boat starts getting turned around, and when you're not right up by the weeds and you get out there, when you're out there three, four, five hundred yards from shore, um, you know, especially on some of these remote backwaters, you don't know which way is what because there's no house lights, no nothing to be able to tell you. Well, it's really nice to know just by glancing over as you walk up and down to look at that compass and know which direction you're heading and where you are. Yes, you can use a GPS. Yes, I have 
have one that I carry in the boat. It's in that other dry box right there um, on the back transom. But having a compass right there, just quick and easy that I can look at real fast. And that those lights give enough light that I can see it. Um, but it just makes life easy. You're talking about a $1 compass uh, that I use more than anything else on this boat. So just a very handy, simple, functional kind of thing to have and well worth it. Um, and then make sure you got a few ropes in here too. Now a gaff is another thing that's important. Now I actually have a few different gaffs on this boat. I have this gaff right here, which I actually custom bent a little bit myself. Um, I have this gaff right here, little handheld gaff right there. It's just going to lay that way. And I have uh, another gaff that I wedged in. So you can see, I just kind of wedged this one in that seat right here. So these are my three gaffs that I have on the boat at all given times. This one, absolutely the best gaff I've ever used. This one is incredible. Now I did, you can see, I did modify that hook. The hook was shaped more like this one here. Um, but this gaff I use, you have to sometimes get the fish out of the buckets. I don't use these to get the fish into the, into the boat or into the bucket. I use them to get them out of the bucket so that I can get the bucket out of the boat. And then to use them to get them uh, from the ground where I'm throwing them into my trailer so I can get them out of there and stuff like that. So this gaff, um, but nice foam handle on it. Very functional, very simple design. Design, uh, yet sturdy and it's a little bit longer so I don't get my hands all dirty and got to be all covered in fish guts and stuff like when I use this one I'm constantly getting covered with fish stuff not that it's bad uh, and it does work but my favorite one is that one I will put a link to a couple options of gaffs in there for you too now for landing fish in a boat yes you can use a gaff Yes, we have done it with this one right here. It's how we used to do it all the time. Is you get them up to the boat, hook them, and bring them in. What works better, believe it or not, is just a big wide mouth landing net. Okay, again, something I'll put a link to for you. But that thing is just so simple. It sits right there. Fish bucket sits right here as well too, 55-gallon drum. And uh, we use that net. And when they get in close, all you have to do is hold it in front of that fish, and he'll naturally just swim right into it. And then you can grab the arrow once he gets into there, hold that net too, and you lift him up. You don't actually even have to let the fish get into the net or totally like into the bottom of it. You're just using it as a fail-safe if the arrow comes out. Once you get him up, you just drop him right in the bucket but that landing net works so much better than a gaff and you're not swinging and hooking and missing and having them getting off and trying and fighting that net definite gold mine uh, one more tip for you if you use hps lights like i use these are 400 watt hps lights that i got on here they ran with digital ballasts i got them from uh show me bow fishing customs they're amazing lights but those bulbs are a little tricky to carry this gun case right here, which again, I'll send you, uh, I will put it in there for you so you can see, does it have the size on it? It's a number 809. I will put a link down below for it uh, to show you one. But basically this case, what's nice is it will hold three extra bulbs and they're all completely separated. You can see here in the top, one sits right there, one rides right there, and one rides right there. So they're completely separated, but it keeps three spare bulbs completely safe from each other and makes life just really easy. And I just take this and I throw it right underneath the deck, just right down there, and I don't worry about it because of the fact that that thing is completely protected. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to care about it. I don't care where it goes. I don't. It doesn't matter because, like I said, they're completely safe and encased in there and, and all taken care of. So um, there you go. That basically, in a nutshell, kind of covers th this, you know, a few must-have things to make your boat, uh, your boat fishing boat a lot set up, set up a lot better. You're doing this at night, uh, so it's important that you have this stuff. Also, under there, you saw that green bag. Inside that bag, I have a spare reel. I have a spare gadget adapter. I have any spare parts I need for my bows. I have spare tabs, spare shooting gloves. Um, I don't carry extra knocks um, and uh, glue and stuff like that or extra bow tips anymore or, you know, arrow tips because of the fact that I got six arrows under there. Two more right there. So that's eight extra arrows on the boat. Um, but whatever you need, but have a little bag. Something that you can carry all those spare parts in, things like that. Another great idea to have that I took out because we wash it, but normally what hangs 
right on this bracket right here, right where that bracket is. Now the fish bucket sits here, right on there we got just a golf towel with the little golf towel clamp clip that clips right on there and it hangs there and it gives you something to wipe your hands off with when you're done messing with fish or you retighten your arrows and you wipe your hit, get your hands wet. You can use that to clean any of that crap off your hands. And that just usually hangs right on that clamp right there so it's always right there. That bungee cord's just so when I drive I actually loop that over the net to hold the net from moving out. Um, but there you go. Some sweet and simple and very easy and basic tips to make your bow fishing boat better for you. Get out there on the water. Enjoy yourself. Have a great time. Be safe. And we'll talk to you with more stuff here soon. Thanks. Bye.